you know, I don't know which of the 12 principles, but it talked about observing. And number one, observe and interact. <laughs> number one, <laughs> All right. the most important principle. So I think if we just observe what we're already doing, that's a, big, a good beginning. Yeah, great, great. And I, and I think the, I think it, I actually think it should be not centralized in terms of like having an authority over it, but just being able to see it. Like I think it would be great to have it public so people could see it somewhere. I think different people have different levels of comfort with things being public. That's true. That's Apparently. Very true. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, oh, well, Chris first. Oh, you know, things being public and <coughs> private, also quantitative and qualitative. Some of the time banking stuff would be qualitative time. Right. Oh, when I was uh, down in Occupy DC, I just saw a sign that uh, seemed to be the community bulletin board. Uh, there's like a little flyer attached to it so saying this is a leaderless movement. If you see something that needs to be done, do it. And sometimes I wonder, um, you may not be able to see everything that needs to be done. Um, you could talk amongst yourselves and then find out, but then it's hard to delegate authority between who's going to do it, what's uh, you know, the most pressing need, and so forth. That's not just my observation. Um, you know, I, talked, I, I, I opened up this conversation about uh, the sociocracy model that is now being used with permaculture at this commune that I used to work uh, live at in Oregon. And one of the things, they had a map. I love maps. I do map all the time. So I was like, I was all over this document today. I was like, first I was about permaculture, then it was about meetings and organizing people and communities, and then it had maps. I was like, I'm going to eat this alive. So, you were in so, heaven. Yeah, I was in heaven. <laughs> and, it, and, what, and then it, went, it, it just kind of hit all, it rang all my bells, because then it went, the map itself is beautiful. Because it was a spokes model, the very model that is being used in the movement in New York City. It's not being used anywhere else to my knowledge yet, but it's being used in New York City. And basically how it works, and here, here's, so they've been at Lost Valley for almost 20 years now, right? Around, um, close to 20 years, I think it's like 18 years, something like that. So this is a community that's been going for 18 years just outside of Eugene, Oregon, right? And they used to have a consensus-based model, what we have. They gave up on it. And the reason they gave up on it is because they what they found was that people who had been in the community for a long time, who had a lot of knowledge about how things worked, how the business should run, how, how much crops and how electricity out from the solar panels and, and how to get um, you know the Buddhist group to book their next uh, workshop for the land. Like they had a lot of knowledge. They've been doing this stuff for a while. We're having to have give equal voice to people who would just come in off the street new to the community at day one they were just given equal voice and at some at one point the community the, some of the older members stood up it's very interesting they stood up in the group and said we're not doing this the five of us are going to leave and these are like really important people that couldn't leave or the thing would fall apart they're like we're going to leave unless we change this model it cannot work this way anymore so they changed it to this new model and, it, and i guess it works very well and how it works is that um they have these circle groups, they have these many kind of committees and anyone could be on them, so there's still like, you know, like anybody can be on them, right? But in order to be a representative to the spokes, to the central council, the council is where all the knowledge gets kind of funneled towards the central, it's, it's a centralized thing, so it's different than what we're used to. Um, so it goes to this central circle, and in order for you to be, to you have to have a person be nominated from your circle to bring your decisions and your work to report to the central circle. In order to be that person, and it gets rotated, you have to contribute over a period of time to, to get your turn to do that. So you can't just come off the street and just like be the guy who's speaking. You know, like you have to actually be there, do some work. And, and it seems like this model works really, really well for them. And it's based on that mandala design. The whole thing is mapped out based on permaculture principles. So I just, I don't know, may sound a little abstract to you guys right now, but I found it very, very Fascinating. You know what I've seen at another uh, Occupy was an actual school. You know, where they can bring their kids in, or somebody can bring their kids in, to, to find out about that. Would you like to you know, have their kids find out about this? And they, they basically teach them pretty much about the Occupy movement and all that. 
right there at the school. Plus, they can do their homeschooling and all that other stuff there. I thought that would be interesting. Do you know about the School of Everything we have here? No. <laughs> it's all right. So we have a school here. Um, it's called the School of Everything. You want to go? You want to tell a little bit about well, it? Just basically, we do a lot of the teach-ins, the teach-outs, um, public talks, and so forth. And then, if groups want us to speak, you know, we'll arrange that. And even here, when if like a class wanted to come we would try to organize something and we're actually involved with both UB, Buff State, and Canisius looking awesome. at some things there, <coughs> the conferences there as well. But I'm, I'm reluctant to you know make us any more popular than we are because <laughs> half of today I was on the phone with priests and the Orchard oh, wow. Park Library and all these different places attempting to set up uh, our presence. So we do have you know a school that's growing and I always put a plug in this way, we need people who are interested in either speaking or supporting, you know, what we're doing. We're camping too, as well. I mean, the, the, <laughs> all the, the all the <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. aspects. Yeah. And also, the justice dialogues is part of the school of everything. So the school of everything. You're in it. You're in. The, you're in it right now. Exactly the justice dialogue. Aaron, this is a justice dialogue. We're talking about environmental justice right now. And so the Justice Dialogues also covers social justice, economic justice. Um, so uh, Heron started this series. the morale of, of people. And I, I re and correct me if I'm wrong, but I remember when you had the original idea, I remember you communicating that you wanted to hold high-level dialogues and conversations where we ourselves could inform ourselves. We could get better informed, not only about the movement, but why we're doing what we're doing, <coughs> what we can do better. Is that correct? So, so it's about informing ourselves. Everybody, wherever you're I, at. I would like to ask some, maybe because I know this might not be the time or place, but I would like honest opinions, okay? Because this has been crossing my mind. I keep seeing uh, the one that takes the photos all the time, you know, the wonderful photos that-, that Brian. I think that's him. Big guy? And, yeah. I was thinking about getting with him and, and trying to arrange like a calendar where actual people, like actual occupiers. That's well, I think, like the, oh, I think the uh, media team is trying to do something along those lines and coordinate with media? outreach as well. So, yeah. yeah, there's a meeting tonight at 8.30 at Spot Coffee if you want to there you go. think of any other ideas. Or, yeah. I don't have a computer. Well, no, you can computer. just go to the meeting. <laughs> Spot <laughs> Coffee is two go blocks. Go you got feet. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the cheapest transportation in the world. <laughs> so, any, any questions yeah, or any yeah. other comments about the... the uh, when is it? What's the meeting? Oh, it's a uh, spot coffee, eight thirty tonight, and that's the spot coffee in uh, Delaware and Chippewa. So it's only about three, four blocks away. We also have a benefit tonight. Uh, just a couple announcements, just so people know. There's a benefit tonight for Occupy Buffalo. It's at the screening room in Amherst. Oh, uh, okay. They're showing the film, um, uh, the Great Peace March, and then there's going to be a little panel discussion afterwards. Anything else about that you want to say? Yeah, just afterwards. I think there was mention of poetry, and then anybody from Occupy Buffalo may, you know, kind of facilitate a discussion or dialogue with people who are interested. What is that, 6.30 or 7? It's at 7, and it's a donation, you know, love donation for Occupy Buffalo. Merrick organized that. So. Yeah, anybody who's interested in the school stuff, like I said, uh, uh, me and Heron primarily are, are organizing a thing called Occupy Economics, Past, Present, and Future. It's mm -hmm. going to be like a, a series. It's you know, Hopefully it's going to appear at uh, UB, uh, Canisius, and Buff State. Tomorrow night there is a meeting about the UB um, part of it, and uh, there's going to be many professors and activists there. So if you're interested in that, you can see me. And then on Friday, right after the funeral for democracy at 2.30 at Spot Coffee, <laughs> we're having the Canisius meeting. So um, if you're interested in getting something, is that right? It, I'll be there, but you know, other people from Canisius won't. Um, it'll be Brian O'Brien, uh, sorry, uh, Michael O'Brien, who's from UB, 
Um, but uh, basically, we're just going to.